I like that Chef's Row 100 sign there. Hey, you know. Yeah, let's go. Show the love. Show the love. It's nice to finally meet you, man. You know? Yeah. A few years ago, Claudette was telling me a little about you, man. And uh, she actually was like, yeah, you remind me of him or vice versa, you know? And I was like, oh, okay. You know, we must be cut from the same cloth for like Claudette to say that, you know? So. Yeah, she's a real one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she, she, ain't, she ain't got no filter. <laughs> <laughs> man, it's been about two months since your book, No Luck's Given, has come out. Uh, in depth, uh, what was your like intentions behind writing the book? I think uh, my whole focus behind writing this book, No Luck's Given, was I personally didn't feel that I had earned the right to to be on the level that I was kind of in. You know, I, I think there's a lot of insecurity that many of us feel especially when we're in these circles and we're in some of these chef events and you just don't feel like you belong there and i felt like in order for somebody to to really embrace me or accept me you need to get to know me and the only way to know me is from let me tell you my story so that that's really where it started was like you know i i want you to have a, a better glance at who i am starting with where i began how I got into this industry, the people that helped me there, the people that inspired me, the people that mentored me, the the negative things that inspired me and, and uh, made me who I am. Um, and then, you know, becoming an entrepreneur, becoming a restaurant owner, ending up on TV, um, doing all the things that I do, but also the struggles, right? Because we have this perception of what, what the world uh, views us as because of social media. And in reality, that's like a glimpse of, of who we actually are so you know i needed and i wanted people to know like you know it's okay not to be okay mm. that's that's pretty deep man that's uh i feel that a lot with you know like almost like and not that you are an imposter or myself because like it's almost imposter syndrome like why do i deserve to be here you know that mm. that that self-doubt right so I, I feel that a lot, man. And well, you know, and you, you just hit it, right? I mean, we, we talk about imposter syndrome a lot, and I think it's becoming more and more of a topic. But I actually don't view it as imposter syndrome anymore. I think I've, okay. I've gone through enough self-discovery to where I think it's more of a victim's mentality. Mm. And I think a victim doesn't feel like they deserve the joy or the happiness or, or the love, right? Because we come from a, a different world where we were victimized, we come from trauma, we, we come from struggle, and we don't feel like we're allowed to have good things. We're, because everything, especially growing up in, in an urban environment, you have to kind of have this mindset of, I gotta protect what I got, so I probably won't have a lot of nice stuff because I don't wanna have to constantly defend it. Mm. You know, so when you get into these, these rooms and these meetings with people that got all this nice stuff, you kind of like I shouldn't even be in this room. <laughs> you know how <laughs> how'd I get here? Yeah. So you know, I, I think that victim mentality is also a, a big piece of playing into the imposter syndrome. Mm. That's that's a new perspective for me. I appreciate that. Hmm. Yeah. Um. So, uh, you spent some time in in Asia, right? And it's like had a huge impact on your culinary style and uh, inspiration. Uh, how did cooking in cities like uh, Japan and Hong Kong uh, come about? You know, um, I'm, a, I'm an alum of a program called CCAP. And CCAP is an organization that uh, is careers through culinary arts program. So they, they're a nonprofit based out of New York but work in multiple cities across the U.S. that help at-risk at, at -risk teens get um, into, into the hospitality industry. So, you know, 20 something years ago, I was one of those kids. I was a street kid and uh, I earned a scholarship. Um, I earned a $30,000 scholarship to go to culinary school straight out of high school. And it changed my life. That was a huge moment. Um, I've stayed heavily involved in the organization over the years uh, beyond my own chapter. I've been in the New York uh, chapter. I've been in the Chicago chapter, um, you know, LA. Like it's just, it's always been a big piece of what I stay involved in because they still have the ability to create opportunities. So uh, a former alum, he had won a scholarship to go study in Asia through the Gohan Society, which is 
uh, partnership with um, Corn Knives out of New York. So Sori-san, um, she, uh, she put together this exchange program where she takes like, you know, four or five American chefs, takes them to Asia, uh, and then does the same thing with Japanese chefs, brings them to America. Uh, in addition to that, Mr. Grossman, who was the president at the time and the founder, he connected me with um, Helen Chen, who is the daughter of Joyce Chen. And she said, I want to give you a $5,000 grant while you're over there to go study in China. So, you know, I had this amazing opportunity to apply for the scholarship, interview for the scholarship, um, and then earn this scholarship to go do this exchange program. And it was myself, um, one of the chefs from Boulay, one of the chefs from Liberta Din, uh, and then another chef from Danny Myers Entitled. And uh, man, we just, we got lost in Asia. And then once that part of the trip was done of working in Japan, I jumped on a plane and went to China by myself. That's fire, man. Dang. That's, that's really cool. That's a, that Why not, fire. right? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that must have been a great experience, man. Talking about coming out of your 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 shell you know your comfort zone and going to a whole nother country and just digging deep that's that's yeah right. well i think I so many that. of us so many of us uh who don't come from a lot or don't know anything beyond our neighborhoods mm -hmm. we dream of of this world but we're scared of this world and for me cooking has always been the connection to everything beyond the borders of the neighborhood so, you know, cooking a French dish took me to France. Cooking a, a, a stir fry took me to China. These were things that I, I just, I never had the opportunity to travel because I didn't have the money. I didn't have the support. I didn't come from that kind of family. So um, I always dreamed about these places through the dishes as I, as I was cooking. So to finally get the opportunity to get the passport stamp and to, to go over there and study and then just get lost in culture, man, like, that's, you know, that's dope, man. That's dope. Like, uh, so so you you won the scholarship. You were uh, you were cooking since high school. So you've been cooking since you were a teen, and uh, since you've been in the kitchen since then, and you've been an advocate pretty much for uh, mental illness in kitchens. How how has that been successful in your kitchens now? Yeah, you know we we talk a lot on things that weren't talked about 20 years ago, even 10 years ago. I think to have the discussions with some of my younger staff now as a business owner, as a chef owner, um, is a trip because I'm no longer the young buck in the kitchen, right? You, we, we've kind of graced into that next generation and we're having discussions on things that I never would have talked to my chef about when I was that age. You know, and, and we, I, I've learned that as a business owner, as an independent owner, I have the ability to create my own culture. So, you know, one of the things that we introduced uh, a couple of years ago was Sober Week. And it's just, we take a week of, look, I'm making the decision as the owner, as the chef, to not, to not party. I'm not gonna drink, I'm not gonna do nothing. I'm gonna be so sober this week for y'all. That's my commitment. You don't have to do it, but I'm going to host a series of of activities every morning to just discourage you from going out at night, right? We're gonna do yoga in the restaurant. We're gonna have a kickball tournament, restaurant versus restaurant. We're gonna go feed some people that need it. We're gonna we're gonna go do a CrossFit class. Like we do all these crazy things um, the whole week. And and what what's unique about that is not only does it get a lot of the staff talking about sobriety, talking about healthier lifestyle choices, mm -hmm. it also has has started to spread. So other restaurants have started doing this. So we do it every year, but it's just, it's one of those things like there's no shift drinks allowed that week. You know what I mean? Like we want y'all to just take these, these, these next seven days and just clear your mind, you know? Mm -hmm. And that, I think that's a perfect example of something that, you know, we've implemented to, to focus on mental health, to, to build dialogue, to build discussions. That's that's really dope. That's man. That's that's a that's a lot, man. That's that takes uh, a leader, you know, and to to show up and have that every day. Now that it's gone on to other restaurants and they're doing it too, are they getting involved? Like, are you challenging each other? 
Well, that's the cool part is, is we've started challenging each other so other restaurants are doing it. But the one thing that really blew my mind was uh, I took it to social media pretty heavy this last year uh, coming out of the pandemic and it caught fire. You know, so I had this one cook who I've never met, I've never talked to in Atlanta, Georgia. And he's posting everything we're doing, he's out there doing out in Atlanta. As just a young cook in another restaurant that has nothing to do with what we're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, we we have inspired this young man to 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 question is this the way I want to be living my life or is there other alternatives? And I think that's so powerful. Like I, I showed up in New York like two, three weeks right after Sober Week, and I was at an event with Marcus Samuelson, and he's like, brother man. I really want to do that in my restaurants. Like this is Marcus Samuelson, mm-hmm. who's a powerhouse. Yeah, talking about I want to bring it to my restaurants. Like, you know, what I mean, we can inspire just by our own actions, and it takes those small things to just say, you know what, I'm gonna go for it. That's that's really cool because what you're doing is you're inspiring uh, people who who don't necessarily have the resources or know where to get the resources to reach out or the the positive influences around them to take that step that might be in their mind that I want to get sober, I want to do better, I, I want a uh, more healthier lifestyle, and then they'll see they see you doing it, and like, oh, I, I can do this. I could still be a great chef and a cook. I don't have to uh, intertwine myself in this like kind of stigma of a, a cook has to smoke a thousand pack of cigarettes and get drunk every yeah. night and do. You know, I mean, it's the craziest okay. things. Like I, I've, I've, I've seen it, right? And we've, we've all seen it. We've all seen the, the addiction, the lifestyle, right? Numb yourself to the next shift. Like that's, that's a mindset for so many people in the hospitality industry. So as, as a restaurant owner, I just, I think outside the box with a lot of this stuff. So I've, I mean, I've had a chiropractor come in, uh, to just like crack people's backs before shift. I mean, we, we've had a therapist scheduled to come in every Friday. Um, to do, you know, sessions before service, before you go into your weekend, like, how you doing? What's up? You for real? Like, what's going on? Um, we just, we just create these, these different discussions of like, some work, some don't. Um, but I think that's what it takes. If, if, you know, we really want to look at what chef means, which is chief, you got to be the leader. You got to make change yourself. That's, that's good, man. That's good. Uh, last year, you joined the Dream Machine Foundation and you mentored Chef Tony Rojas, uh, who recently opened up his own food truck, which I followed and is awesome. Uh, how was that experience for the both of you and Chef Tony Rojas? Man, it's been, it's been rough, right? You know, um, I love Charlie and, and everything that Charlie Rocket does um, and the Dream Foundation, everything they do. Um, and, and we helped a, a person achieve their dream, right? We we met this young, not this young, we met this man, Tony, um, panhandling. And, and somebody asked him, what's your dream? And he said, my dream is to own a food truck. And it, it happened to be in my city, uh, out here in Colorado Springs. And uh, I got involved. And I think a mentor is somebody who becomes your friend. Right. It's a trusted advisor that eventually allows you to drop your walls to become a friend. And that's what happened with me and Tony. You know, I made a friendship with this man and I got to know him and we we took the, the money we raised. We bought a food truck for him. We put him in a house to live in for the next year. Um, and then I took on the responsibility after Charlie and the team departed to, to be Tony's mentor and Tony's friend. And it was a crazy year, man. We did. We got the truck open. Uh, all the money got spent, had to raise more money, you know, food truck problems, it broke down, things got towed, like bad employees, like all the stuff that comes with running um, a business. And, you know, sadly, Tony's past caught up to him. Things that we didn't know about, things he didn't disclose, um, caught up to him. And Tony is is now incarcerated. And it's, it's, it's horrible because he's probably gonna be locked up for a while. And uh, it just goes to show you, like, even when you achieve your dreams, you still have to keep the work going. Like, you can't, there's no skipping the work. You have to put in the reps. And as much as it breaks my heart that Tony isn't out there, you know, selling tacos and living his dream, um, 
he's still somebody I consider a friend and it's somebody that, you know, is now just going to be a pen pal for a while. Man, I, I didn't know that, Chef. That's sad. That's, that's I mean, you know, there's there's consequences to all of our decisions, regardless of how long ago you made them. You can't run from the skeletons in your closet. Like, them doors are going to burst eventually. And uh, you got to be willing to deal with the, the, the consequences from the decisions you made. Oh man, that that's sad, man. That's unfortunate. Um, whoo, it's a awkward, uh, not awkward, but hard. <laughs> no, it's it's real. No, man. no, it, it, no. I'm saying hard transition to the next question, but no, that's <laughs> real, real. Like, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's, um, that's what we need more, right? Too many yes. of these chefs, and this mm -hmm. is always my frustration with a lot of the chefs mm -hmm. in our industry is they get so caught up in, in celebrity lifestyle and i'm on this tv show and i'm traveling to this cool place they forget to be real mm -hmm. because so many of their followers are measuring themselves against your highlights mm -hmm. and if you're only posting the cool stuff the fun stuff the beautiful stuff the wins and you're not talking about the losses mm -hmm. somebody's beating themselves up as they look at your social so when I talk about somebody like Tony, I, I think it's important because mm -hmm. not everything is flowers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, I can relate to that. So many ways, man. So many ways. So um, lastly, uh, we've been asking our chef interviewees uh, a question uh, for a series called Off the Record. Uh, where chef t chefs tell us one of the most outrageous stories from their culinary career thus far. It could be uh, one from the trenches, meeting someone in particular, or a tale of glory or tragedy. Uh, R-rated is okay, but we do ask that nobody else is compromised. Uh, after all, it is off the record. Uh, so what has been one of your most off the cuff experiences off the record? memories thus far in your career yeah man so many right we all we all got them especially you know me being 25 years in um i had a recent experience that that was pretty powerful uh i'm i'm, I'm heavy on, on faith and uh i had a uh email come through one of my websites and it was like hey i'm looking to connect with chef brother luck my name's pete and uh you know i ain't talked to him in a while and I knew exactly who this gentleman was. So I hit him up, called him back immediately. And he said, you know, brother, I didn't think you were going to call me back. Like, you're a celebrity chef now, man. I've seen everything you, you're doing. Like, but then I was like, nah, brother will call me back. I know brother from back in the day. He began to share with me kind of his story, his struggle. You know, I was a chef here, I was a chef there. I got into drugs. Eventually I lost my job because of the drugs. Then I got into to running guns to Mexico back and forth. And my lifestyle just blew up, man. And right now I'm in a rehab facility. I'm trying to get my life together. I've been here for a year. Um, you know, I've got some clarity, man. And I just, I came across something you did on YouTube and I was like, man, it's so inspirational. And I just wanted to hit you up and say, thank you that you're inspiring me and my journey in this rehab facility. But, you know, to get to the off the record, my favorite memory of this gentleman is he was crazy. We all went to high school together. Mm -hmm. So he was super crazy. Like, you know, this dude got expelled for doing donuts on the on the football field oh. in his Jeep. Right. Like <laughs> <laughs> super wild. Yeah. So we all worked downtown at, at this hotel and, uh, you know, and they were all like 17, 18, all of us. And there was probably like five or six of us all from the same high school that worked at this hotel. And this fool was so wild. He was like straight cowboy, road bulls, like, you know, no joke. He pulled up one day and we all had to park in front of the hotel at the meters. And he was just like so wild with it. He goes, somebody parked in my spot as we all sitting out there, you know, waiting to go in. And he takes his tow hitch and he actually tows a car out of the spot leaves it in the middle of the road and parks wow and, and then walks in and clocks in like it's nothing <laughs> you know? wow that, i don't wow that's like what 
you know, one of my favorite stories with, with that guy was uh, was watching him tow this car out so he could park his Jeep in his <laughs> spot. Man, none of us parked in that spot ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just crazy like that, man. That's so I, Can you imagine being that person coming out of the hotel and being like, where's my where's my car? Because <laughs> yeah, you just left it in the middle of the street in downtown Phoenix. You know, wow. it was just, it was super wild. So, um, but you know, it's just, it's beautiful. Like after 20 something years, uh, of all those years and in, in the kitchens together, like you can still connect with somebody by sharing your story on social media and putting messages out there about positivity mm -hmm. and uh, and awareness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, that's that's wild, man. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna be thinking about that all day. I'm gonna watch where I park my car now. I'm like look for like any signs <laughs> of like, <laughs> man. And where's that dude? I, so I know not to park near him. Yeah, yeah, he's out <laughs> Phoenix. All right, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> uh, man, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for your time, Chef. Um, if you need anything, just just holler at me. Uh, let me know, man. And uh, no, I'm so stoked, man. Yeah, I think I think I'll be heading out that way. Um, anti convention, right? And that coming yeah, up next year. Yeah, 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 yeah. 2023 September. Yeah. So yeah, man. Yeah, we de we definitely gonna rock with it. So, yeah, um, yeah man. I, I appreciate the love and the opportunity, and you know, I'm looking forward to connecting. Uh, just you know, more in general. So hit me up. All right, bet bet. All right, man. Appreciate you. You have a wonderful day, man. Talk soon, huh? All right, peace, y'all.